On that video that we did a couple days ago on the rear end for Bottle Rocket, a lot of you guys noticed this chassis sitting out here and you're curious about it. So I'm going to bring you up to speed on what this thing is and what we're doing with it. But first, let's go here real quick and show you what's going on. Uh, we've spent the last day or so under Bottle Rocket cleaning, painting, getting everything ready for the rear end. We're waiting on the parts. Everything's been ordered. Should be here within the next few days. Um, well, this is a big thing. It's a mess back there. You know, because when we did this, we just kind of like rushed through everything. So right now I'm cleaning the rest of the undercoat and getting everything nice, painting the rear end. It'll be pretty when it's done. Got to show them love. You know, they respond to that. They understand love. I'll show your hot one love. We got this one. We, uh, we dragged this over here yesterday and got a good look underneath at the damage. And we are going to be able to, we are going to use this roller. The frame rail itself is good. The leaf spring mount is good. Just the bulkhead area around it is gone. So it'll be an easy enough fix. I just have to cut that bottom of the quarter, graft in a, a fresh section of rocker, and uh, this thing will be good to go. So this motor is going to come out. This was just a mule that we stuck in here to get the car running. This is coming out, and our the one that the slant that we started building earlier this year is going to go in. Uh, so this will be the next thing that we work on after we've got bottle rocket back together again. And that brings us out to see. So you got to realize I'm one guy working by myself, so it's, it's you know I go as fast as I can with this stuff. Oh, also, we're going to pick up a G Tech Pro uh, because getting to the track is difficult. So we have an area out here that we can do some, some you know, testing with. Uh, and the, the G-Tech will at least give us uh, a guide. It's not a substitute for track testing, but at least it'll give you a guide. You know, you know whether you're going in the right direction or not with certain things. So that's another thing we will be getting into very soon. Um, okay, so let's go back out to this, chain, this frame here. So. We are not ready to start actually working on this thing. So keep that in mind. Those two cars have to be done and complete before we can actually dig into this. The time frame for this is next September, the Gambler 500 that they do here in Tennessee. We want to have this car ready for that. So if you guys aren't familiar with the Gambler 500, it's an on off road rally sort of thing. It started in Colorado. There's a few of them now around the country. It's, 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 a, lot, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And the premise is you have to, the, the 500 part is that it's, the car should cost less than 500 bucks. Well, so far our cost involved in this thing is zero. So where did I get the inspiration from this? Uh, Junkyard Digs, I don't know if you guys know the channel, uh, and his girlfriend Mook did a, uh, a, a, a 68 or a 69 Le Mans gambler build. And I saw that and I love that. I thought, oh, that, that's such, that looks like such a fun idea. And, and I've become a fan of the show called Dirt Every Day, which is like completely unlike me, you know, because I'm not really a dirt guy. Spent some t a little time on dirt bikes, had fun with that. But you know, there's just something about the show. It's like, yeah, it's, a, a, it's magnetic, right? So I said, you know, I want to have a part of that. I want to have that element in my channel, right? So that's why we decided to build this off-road thing. And uh, it's not necessarily built specifically for the Gambler 500, but I want a, a, a cheap, fast, fun off-road vehicle. So uh, that's what this is. So let me bring you up to speed. The, this chassis right here is a 1971 Dodge D100. It's the last year for this the, the, the buggy sprung front end, which, listen, I'm t I, I don't know how I managed to not have one of these through my whole life, right? But I have absolutely fallen in love with this chassis. The, the front end is just, it's, it's magic. It's the ultimate in simplicity. Um, and the frame rails, the way this thing is designed, you can stick any engine, any oil paint, any situation in here, and poof, there's no squeeze for headers, there's no issues with oil paint clearance, there's nothing. It's just like, it's like a pure, perfect blank slate. This is the first one of these that I've ever dealt with. But I will tell you from now on, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try to find reasons to build more stuff around this front end. It's perfect. Um, all right. So here's where we're at now. I uh, 
it's not time to actually start working on this car, but I have space constraints here. Right now, okay, so I'm full here, and in the back, I've got seven vehicles and a trailer. Cars, trucks, trailer, I even have the, the, the car that I picked up just in case this slant didn't work out, which will be another project for way down the road. But uh, I'm crunched for space here, so what I need to do is incorporate this chassis and this body. So we talked about this before. This was a parts car, and this is going to be what's going on top of that frame. It's a 1968 Valiant. So I says, all right, I can't get deeply involved in the build of this thing now because I have so many other things going on, but I need to consolidate. I got to get this frame on that chassis and then just roll it out of the way so I have my space out here clear. Uh, so this is where we're at with this. This is a 108 inch wheelbase, that's a 128 inch wheelbase. So I says, you know what, this is really easy. This chassis here has a 20 inch section right here that I could just lob right out of it, roll the back section up, graft it together here, and then I've got a 100, 108 inch wheelbase thing ready to go. So the other morning I'm like, okay, I gotta get to work on this just to get it out of the way, just so I can, I can roll this thing in the back. And I'm looking at it up saying, all right, let's just do it. Let's just get this done. So I got a T-square and I got laid up here and I'm, I'm about to scrub. I'm going to make my marks. And he says, oh, right, you know, let me, let, me, let me brace this thing up so I can drag the engine hoist down. I hook the engine hoist up over here to hold up the back of it. Put a jack on there with a block to hold up the, the front of it. So when I cut it, I could just, you know. And then I said to myself, wait a minute. I know I'm, I know I'm not taking something into consideration. What is it? You know, there, there's something. And then it occurred to me. The Ackerman geometry. See, I, I've, I've built countless cars over the course of my life, but never once have I given stuff like steering any consideration because that's not my thing. I like to go straight. And I says, wait, no, steering is important on this car. Uh, the Ackerman geometry has to be right. If you guys aren't familiar with the Ackerman geometry, this goes back to this goes back to actually. Um, way before even cars. This is when they had like horse and buggies. And the idea was uh, when you're making a turn, one wheel is going gonna, is gonna to have to travel further than the other. So what they did was they, 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 they devised this geometry called the Ackerman geometry. And what it does is it moves the, the, uh, the steering arms inward. Okay, so the, right now the wheels are straight, but when you turn the wheels, based on the Ackerman geometry, that wheel turns in more than this wheel does. So, I says, I, if I shorten this, I'm going to have to do something with the Ackerman, because the car is going to want to push, especially on dirt, like there's no traction. So, I don't want something that's going to, you know, keep going straight. When I turn the wheel, it's going to have to turn, right? So I says, all right, let me see where this thing ends up. So I says, this is a 120 inch wheelbase. And I, I, I ran, okay, oh, see, I'm leaving this part out. Proper Ackerman geometry dictates that this angle right here meets in the center of the rear axle. So if you were to take this, make a straight line right here, okay, it should come to right here. And that's proper Ackerman. Well, when I measured this, this is a 120 inch wheelbase. When I measured the Ackerman on this, it actually works out to be proper for a 140 inch wheelbase. So it already has not enough in it. So here's my choice. I keep it the 120 inch, 120 inch wheelbase and not mess with the front end, just leave it the way it is and mount that body on it with the back wheels pretty much at the back of the chassis. The way it works out is this is where the back bumper actually sits on that car. And that's taking into account, that's putting the driver's seat right here where it intends to be, the firewall right here where it intends to be on that car, and the radiator right here. So 
that's what we're going to do. Rather than reinvent the wheel and try to make this front end something that it's not, we're going to leave this thing at the 120 inch wheelbase and then just open the back wheel wells and put the wheels to the back. It'll look a little freaky, you know, but uh, as long as it, as long as the car functions, as long as it does what it's supposed to do. So that's where I'm at with this. I do not want to get working on this car right now in earnest. You know, it's, it's not time for it. When we do dive into it, I want it to be a full on effort. But for right now, over the next couple of few days, I do have to get that body sat down on this chassis and then get this whole thing out in the back. So that's the update on this. That's what we're doing with this. And uh, oh, also, uh, originally we were gonna do a, a, a 273, a Magnum had a 273 for this. And we've had so many people ask about big block stuff, so what we're going to do is we're going to build a 3D3 for this. And I'm still going to do the 273. I have one mounted up on the stand already. We're going to do the 273 with the Magnum heads. Uh, and it's going to go into our 67 GT, which already has 273. So it's already got this one here. It runs really good. It's tired. So... Uh, We'll be doing the 273 to replace this 273. And again, that'll be after we get these other ones together and run it. So that's it. Update from uh, the Skunk Works here. I got to get back to work. See you tomorrow.